Wait a minute. What type of Toy Story shenanigans <laughs> is this? Ready? I guess. But isn't your mom going to freak? She's probably cooking with the radio on. She won't hear a thing. Are you sure, Chloe? I think she'll notice a hole in the floor. Especially Trust since science, there's Max. dynamite. Even when science means blowing shit up. What a bad influence. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Poor dolls. Poor floor. Poor room. Oh. Nothing happened. Good. I'm glad. Oh! I rest my case. <laughs> Tell me that wasn't the coolest thing you've ever seen! Dude. You're insane. That explosion was massive. You say that like it's a bad thing. Pretty sure your mom would think so. Let's hope she didn't hear. When she asked me to get rid of my old junk, she never specified how. So being destructive well, is how you get rid of stuff? To. I'll be excavating the closet. If you see anything else to trash, help a girl out and chuck it on the pile over there. Okay. Will do. That's right, you guys. I am playing Life is Strange Before the Storm. I finally it's like I've spent half my life hanging out in this room. <laughs> Probably because I have. I finally I got around to getting this game. Those days are all over now. Plus, based off of what happened in the first Life is Strange game, I feel like I just had to do the prequel. In a few days, my whole family moves to Seattle. I have no idea when I'll see Chloe again. This could be my last chance to say goodbye. It is actually last chance for a while, though. How do you tell your best friend that you're leaving her? By telling her that you're leaving her? Oh man, this is this is going to be a sad episode, especially with Max's point of view. But at least we I have an idea. Help Chloe with her cleaning. And while I'm at it, I can take one long last look around this place. I could see a good amount of differences between this bedroom and the Life is Strange bedroom. Let this box of trash be a sacrifice to you, oh almighty glowy bear. It's good to know that Max has not changed at all, even as a little kid. Chloe and I haven't played this game in forever, and I'm pretty sure it's missing pieces. I love how it says oopsies. That is so funny. Trash it. Y'all don't play with it anymore, so. What are you doing? Adding this to the pile. No freaking way. Just because I beat your ass every time we play doesn't make it trash. Ooh, burn. Burn. Chloe. We haven't played this game in years, and it's missing half the pieces. <laughs> nice try, Max, but you can't erase your shame that easily. You old jerk. You, whatever, whatever, anyways. This was our first unsupervised concert together. It was so much fun. We were supposed to see another show next month, but... How sick was that show? The sickest. I've been working on my moves for the next one. Check it out. What a dork! <laughs> I love it, though. How about you? Any new moves? Besides crying, Max? Yeah, totally. I've been working on my air guitar. <laughs> Damn, Caulfield. Save something for when it counts. <laughs> All right. Back to the junk mines. I'm not used to seeing Chloe in a very positive, different light. Chloe's but it's good to see... Chloe's always imaginary animals to real ones. Well, besides Bongo, of course. It's good to see what she was like before... 
uh, Max actually moved Chloe's out. Chloe's mom wanted us to go through this pile of old clothes and find stuff to donate. Instead, we played dress up for an hour. See, these two kids, they're just having fun. Chloe's had this hung up on her wall forever, but neither of us can figure out what happened to the last panel. The adventurous. Okay. The adventurous adventures of Supermax and Dr. Clorenstein. Our crime fighting has really soared since you created those rocket boosters. Of course, the power of flight does tend to make things easier. Dr. Clorenstein? These kids. I wonder what really changed. Live fast, die young, and go out with a bang. Rest in pieces, doll. Has the departure of Max really changed Chloe like that? I'm just curious. Because if that's the case, it seems like Max was really important to Chloe. Whoa. Talk about embarrassing. Shady Mesh Abe. Nice. Let's trash this. How about these boy band trading cards? Super cringeworthy. Yeah, and hilarious. Remember when we gave them all makeovers? You mean when you drew boobs on all of them? I was so mad at you. Mm -mm. And yet, our friendship lived on. So too will these cards. Put them back for real? So, you're not really trashing anything, you're just quietly rearranging them. Chloe keeps trying to get me to hop on her board. I'd rather take pictures. Chloe's such a nerd. She hangs on to all her old textbooks and school supplies. That is a day and night difference compared to the first game where Chloe just basically says, screw school. Chloe's had this hoodie for years. It's her favorite. I don't think she'd mean to throw it away. Now let's save this hoodie. Bye. What are you doing? Your favorite hoodie. You must have thrown it in by mistake, right? No. It, it, it's fine. Are you sure? It's filled with holes and falling apart. It's still a good that hoodie, though. I never stopped you from wearing it before. Why now? It's fine. Really. Hmm. Okay. That's still a good hoodie. I mean, you can even, like, patch it up, so I don't see what's the big deal. Chocolate? We bought this as a gag years ago. I honestly can't believe Chloe still has it. Let's see if we can trash this one. What about this half-eaten jawbreaker? A serious biohazard. You promised me we'd finish it together no matter how long it took. Don't be a quitter. That's nasty, Chloe. But you know what? You're right. Yes. Ew! The never candy lives on. Ew! <laughs> yeah. They're, okay. You know what? They're Whenever endgame. I'm ready, I can go tell Chloe I'm done arguing about trash with her. Chloe's been beating me for a while. That growth spurt could come any day now. No, Max. Stop lying to yourself. You're always going to be a shorty forever. I think Chloe used to call this guy Mr. Sharky. I doubt she plays with it anymore. Let's trash it then, if that's the case. You better not be thinking what I think you are. Never mind. Chloe, I haven't seen you touch this guy in years. Why do you care? Why do I care if you throw my beloved childhood friend into the trash? I don't think that deserves an answer. Ooh, okay. All right. I'll leave it alone. Sorry, chum. My bad. That's better. All right, so Sharky is definitely a no-no. People say a lot of things about the Prescott family, but this is pretty cool. The Prescott family. Oh, my goodness. That is so... Awkward. I can never tell if Chloe is my best friend because she makes me do crazy things or despite it. Especially with what happened in part one, seeing the Prescott family like that. Mm. 
Bad vibes. I bet Chloe's parents were freaking out when she got this letter. To the parents of Chloe Price, dear parents, congratulations. Your child, Chloe Price, has been accepted for September 2008 admission to Blackwell Academy. We have offered places to approximately 100 students out of 1,200 applicants. Your child excelled in all criteria for admission. An open house for admitted students and parents will be held on March 26. April 2nd is the deadline to inform us of your intentions regarding admission. Your admission reply form is included. For those who require financial aid, please contact Blackwell's Office of Financial Assistance. We look forward to welcoming you and Chloe to the Blackwell Academy family. Sincerely, Marco S. Gonzalez, Director of Admissions. I still can't believe you're a Blackwell Academy student. How is it? Oh, the classes are incredible. The teachers are actually smart. And the lab is legit. Petri dishes for days. What about the students? Are they as stuck up as you thought they'd be? They're fine. Mm-mm. No, they're not. Chloe, you are terrible at hiding your feelings. Is everything okay? Talk to me. I'm yeah, Max, just, your best I friend. Like hanging out with normal people, like you. Thanks. Oh, thanks. I guess. You know what I mean. I, I hate fake people. You're real. Thanks. Damn, it's gonna be a lot harder to tell Chloe that you're leaving her. Great. <gasps> the camera. Hey. <gasps> what's your dad's camera doing in here? Dad said I could bring it up here for you to use. He's tired of watching you drool all over yourself every time he uses it. His words. Nice. Your dad is the best. Sure. Just don't ever tell him that. We need to keep him on his toes. I totally forgot that the dad is alive. <laughs> You're off to a great start. Is this when Max became... Actually, it's kind of cool. A camera enthusiast? Because that makes sense. What? Magic stuff? Since when? I was lucky to survive Chloe's magic phase with all my fingers intact. That is so cute. She had this a magic seems phase. seems like a good candidate. What do you think? You insane? What? An entire magic collection. Do you know how many weeks of allowance this cost? So that's a no. You haven't touched these since the fifth grade talent show. Maybe because my assistant turned out to be squeamish at the sight of fake blood. And you're blaming you me? you saw me in half. How are you planning to clean this place if you won't throw away anything? A magician never reveals her secrets. Put it back. Okay, Chloe. Your prerogative. I'm just, you know, telling it like it is. Call it like I see it with my glasses on. Okay, so what else? Lie down? Why would I lie down? As usual, Chloe's grades are better than mine. I still kick her butt in PE, though. That is so crazy, because in part one, it's actually the opposite now. Max has all good grades, and Chloe's just failing all her, class her classes. Let me see, let me see. Earth Sciences, English, World History, Pre-Algebra, Spanish 1. Wow, okay. I see it, I see it. All right, let me see if I could lay down. That bed looks so stiff, I'm not gonna lie. It's so hard to believe. This room, this house, this town, all in the past now. Or soon to be. I know Max is feeling so Who guilty. Who am I without Chloe? She's the one who's always starting things, pulling us into adventures. I can't imagine life without her. It's only temporary, Max, trust Maybe me. I haven't told her I'm leaving yet because I still can't believe it's real myself. You better tell her ASAP, man. Stop keeping that secret from her. She's gonna resent you. But Max, like I said, 
you'll be gone for a few years and then you'll come back just like in part one i mean obviously we know that but she doesn't so all right let's go get off the bed all right max it's time to tell chloe That's it. I'm calling off the search. If you want more trash, you'll have to find it yourself. Well, it wasn't exactly the purge mom was hoping for, but at least we tried, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And now we've got the whole day ahead of us. What do two under-supervised friends with clean rooms and clean slates want to get into today? I guess <laughs> now would be a good time to tell Chloe I'm leaving. Or I could let us enjoy the day first and tell her later. Tell her now. Get it over with. Actually, Chloe, I really have to tell you something. It's... Uh, I... Don't know how Holy to... shit! Max, hold that thought. Oh, come on, really? This must have fallen out when I was digging around in here. Do you have any idea what this is? It's a cassette tape. Whatever it is, it looks like it came out of our pirate phase. Your powers of deduction are as strong as ever. Thank you. This tape is from five years ago. It's a message from our past selves to our current selves. Wait, so what? Eight years old? That's crazy. I can't even imagine what we sounded like. All right, ready to find out. <laughs> A vast future wayfarer. Ye have uncovered the audio log of the most fearsome pirates in the bays of Arcadia. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Bluebeard and Long Max Silver. <laughs> you are such so, you're in so cute. Of buried treasure, are ye? Well, if it's <laughs> treasure ye seek. <laughs> what Dad, get away! We're in the middle of an important project. Oh, a project. Never mind then. I apologize. I mean it. Oh my I gosh, this is so cute. Numbers in five. Wash your hands, you grubby pirate kids. <laughs> so lame. <laughs> As I was saying, <laughs> if it's treasure you seek, you've come to the right place. But be forewarned, the journey will be treacherous and full of. <laughs> Treasures. Nice. To find the treasure of Price Isle, you will need the map from the manuscripts of Captain Bluebeard. Only the map can lead ye to the treasure ye seek. But be forewarned. Uh, again, mm. only those <laughs> pure hearts will be able to see what the amulet shows them. The amulet. <laughs> Good luck. And... Uh, why? <laughs> Dude, that was amazing. I can't believe you still have that. Uh, I would never throw away something so precious. Mm, aw, okay, that's so okay. adorable. Today, we go treasure hunting. Wait, really? Max, you still need to tell her, though. I think I know what eight-year-old you meant by the manuscripts of Captain Bluebeard. You still have it? For real? Our old sketchbook. This is where we kept all our pirate drawings. Yep. Now let's see this map. She actually kept it. That is so amazing. Property of Captain Bluebeard and Long Max Silver. The Bane of Arcadia. Wow, that's a really great drawing for an eight-year-old. I'm actually impressed. Crow's Nest, Saloon, Cockpit, Treasure Keep, Plank, Cannons, Galley. And they actually have the pictures. Oh my goodness, eight-year-old Chloe and Max are so adorable. <gasps> oh my god, the cat! Oh! Oh, the cat! Look at the eye patch! Look at the bandana! The outfit! 
Wow. Pirate rules. No bathing. Mm. No boys on the ship, of course. No sharing pirate secrets. Always share plunder. Always bury treasure. Always protect fellow pirates. Failure to obey the rules will result in plank walking. Okay, let me see. Captain's log. Another day of plunder and destruction on the high seas. Our just buried treasure has come under attack again. The evil commander, Shelley, enemy to all pirates, has threatened to take the map from us if she sees it. Surely she has heard how valuable our treasure is and wants to steal it from us. We are doing our best to keep the map hidden as we continue to work on it. Because our enemies want our treasure so bad, we must make sure the map is only readable to us. Captain Bluebeard and Long Max Silver. To more plunder and riches, Captain Bluebeard, Long Max Silver. This looks like a page was ripped out. I wonder if it's the map. Oh no, the map's not even here. Hey, check this out. This page was ripped out. Do you think it's the map? It has to be. There's no way I would have thrown it out. Maybe it's mixed in with the rest of the drawings? Who would have ripped out the map, though? So much for telling Chloe now. <laughs> All she cares about is finding this map. But where could it be? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where can it be? Chloe and I were doing a lot of drawing in Miss Shelley's class. I wonder if the map is mixed in with her school supplies from that year. Uh, let me see here. Great job as always, Chloe. Now please try to pay attention in class instead of drawing pictures with Maxine. Social Studies, Stars and Stripes, Chapter 11. The Civil War began when Southern states wanted to secede from the Union. The President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, gave the Gettysburg Address and issued the Emancipation Proclamation. The people who fought to end slavery were, all, were called abolitionists. Harriet Tubman worked with the Underground Railroad to help slaves escape to freedom. In 1864, Congress passed the 13th Amendment, a change or addition to the Constitution, ending slavery. This is like a good amount of fifth grade stuff right here. Maybe it's in here? Chloe's mom wanted us to go through this pile of old clothes and find stuff to donate. Instead, we played dress up for an hour. So it's clearly not in there. Chloe's so determined to find the map. No yeah, I see the... She her mind to something. She just doesn't give up. Oh, uh, look at Max admiring her friend, a.k.a. future girlfriend. Wait, hold on, what's this? I miss the days when this was considered homework. Max and Chloe's sewer adventure. You are Max and Chloe, the best friends and students in school. You sit in class until suddenly a cute squirrel arrives at the window. It is so cute. Do you want to pet it? Pet the squirrel, page eight. Don't pet the squirrel, page three. You are very stupid, crossed out brave. <laughs> you leap down into the sewer. Thankfully, there is a pile of trash, banana peels, and dirty diapers to land on. Whew. You hear a squirrely sound in the distance, so you run to follow it. There are many twists and turns. Eventually, you come to a fork in the road, but now is not the time for eating. So you put the fork back down and consider the two paths in front of you. On the ground, you see a trail of tiny footsteps to the left and a trail of chewed up paper to the right. Which way do you go? Left, page nine, right, page seven. Why don't you like squirrels? <laughs> They're so cute and nice. You must be very mean. The squirrel seems annoyed that you ignored her. She runs in and steals the book report right off your desk, then runs back outside. That squirrel stole my book report, you tell the teacher. Uh-huh, whatever you say, Mrs. Anders responds, clearly not believing you. What do you do? Chase the squirrel, page four. Stay in class, page ten. I like how this is a choose-your-own-adventure type of assignment, and I'm really impressed that these eight-year-olds were able to actually create something like this. 
As soon as Mrs. Anders turns around, you run out the window and chase the squirrel. That is a very bad thing to do, and you hope you don't get in trouble later, but you probably will. Outside, you look around, but you can't find the squirrel. Is she gone? Oh, there she is. She's standing next to a sewer hole. You run up to her, but she gets scared and jumps down. Oh boy, do you really want to go down there? Jump down the sewer, page two. Find another way, page six. You run away like a scaredy cat. I don't blame you. That thing is gross. As you run, you almost trip on a small, shiny object. You pick it up, it's lighter. Your mom never lets you play with these. Sorry, your mom never lets you play with these. But she's not here right now, is she? Now is your chance to kill the Rat King and protect all the students' homework once and for all. This is your chance to be a hero. Do you do it? Just kidding. You don't get a choice. You might get to choose some things, but I'm still the Arthur here. You have to attack the Rat King. But how do you want to attack him? Burn his tail, page 11. Burn his throne, page 13. I don't blame you. That sewer hole looks pretty scary. But is there any other way down? Suddenly, a light burp I'm sorry, a light bulb appears above your head. You use it to light the way back to your house and into your bathroom. You step one foot into the toilet and flush. Flush. Next thing you know, you are in the sewer. On the ground, you see a trail of tiny footprints to the left and a trail of chewed up paper to the right. Which way do you go? Left, page nine. Right, page seven. Smart choice. You go to the right, following the path of chewed papers. After a bit of walking, you end up in a dark corner. Suddenly, the floor falls away. You find yourself swimming in some sort of warm liquid, almost like a big puddle, except why does this liquid taste like acorns? A bright light comes on and turns out you're not in a puddle. You're in a big bowl of acorn soup, and all around you are squirrels, holding spoons and wearing tiny little aprons. They look so cute. And the soup keeps getting hotter. Guess you weren't too smart after all. At least you'll be delicious. The end. You go to the window and pet the squirrel. Of course, why wouldn't you? It's a cute squirrel and you want to pet it. Hey, Mr. Squirrel, you said. Ah, stop biting me, you say next, because the squirrel is now biting your hand. But it's too late. You have rabies. Damn. <laughs> Mrs. Anders has to shoot you. What? So you don't bite anyone else. This makes her very sad. Guess you shouldn't have pet the squirrel. The end. That is a little bit morbid, but okay. You picked right. I mean left. Which was right. It's confusing. In the distance, you see the squirrel. But he's not moving. In fact, he's dead. Who would kill a pearl squirrel? Suddenly, the ground begins to shake. Around the corner, a giant rat appears. It's the biggest rat you've ever seen. I bet it's a New York rat. That's why. The biggest anything you've ever seen. It's the Rat King. The Rat King is wearing a crown and, and standing on the throne of all your missing homework, including your book report. What do you do? Run towards it, page 12. Run away, page 5. You decide not to chase the squirrel. When the time comes to present your book report, you tell Mrs. Anders that a squirrel stole it and ran away. She doesn't believe you. Remember, I told you, she doesn't believe you. Why didn't you listen? You should pay more attention. Anyway, Mrs. Anders reports you to the principal, and soon you are kicked out of school for being a bad student. Without school, you can't ever get a job or make money. Now you live in a shack <laughs> without TV and do drugs. <laughs> Yo, these kids have a wild imagination. Soon you will be dead. Guess you should have paid attention the end? What is this? You decide to burn his gross long hairy tail. Good plan. Whoosh. The Rat King's tail is on fire. He does not like that one bit. He starts freaking out, waving his tail around like crazy. You know all the trash and dirty diapers in the sewer? Those are highly inflammable, which means the same as flammable for some reason. Suddenly, the entire sewer catches on fire. You're surrounded by gross sewer flames. Is this really how you die? Burning to death with the Rat King in disgusting sewer? Yes, it is. The end. I just love these endings. They're so hilarious. Okay. 
Your dad always tells you to run toward your problems, not away from them. Unfortunately, you picked a really bad time to start listening to him. You run right towards the Rat King. At first, he seems surprised. You try to punch him in the face, but you forgot about his long, hairy, gross tail. He wraps you up like a boa constructor and drops you into his mouth, swallowing you with one gulp. Now you get to see what the inside of a rat looks like. This would make a great science report. Too bad you won't be alive to tell anyone. The end. You decide to burn the Rat King's throne. It hurts you to burn all of that amazing homework, including your wonderful book report. But you remember that it's for a good reason. As soon as the throne catches on fire, the Rat King begins screaming, No! My throne! Suddenly, the Rat King begins to shrink. Before long, he is back to the size of a normal rat. He can't even climb out of his huge crown. Aw, he's so cute now. You run back to class and tell Mrs. Anders all about the Rat King and everything that happened. Not only does she forgive you for not having your book report, but she declares that you are the greatest hero in the school. Duh. The end. Until the next Max and Corey adventure. This is so inventive. Maxine and Corey. But next time, please do the book report you were assigned, Mrs. Anders. Oh, yes. Take that, Rat King. Thank you for watching. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.